Welcome to Huawei Middle East Innovation Lab. In previous video, we show how to design a site, how to add devices in SD1. So we, we configured the global configuration for both physical network and virtual network. So in today's demo, we will continue the one and the array. So today's topic on the globe side, you can see we will help show how to create the one main template, how to do the zero touch provision deployment via email and URL, and how to configure the one and the route. And we also show how to build the UGP EV pin via routing reflectors, we call that side interconnection. Okay, let's move on to the live environment now. So we will go into the same place, multi-branch interconnection. Last video, we finished the device management. So then we move on to the network activation, okay? The one link template. So we prepared everything. We, we configured the logical site and the devices, okay? Then we bring them on, okay? bring them online. So firstly, we need to create one link template. So, and what is one link template used for? As you can see, we already have five one link template by default, okay? Either from the single gateway or dual gateway. Single gateway means you only have one access router in, in the site. Dual gateway means you have two access router, okay? Remember that our side one device, side one have dual gateway and the other sides have only single gateway. So I will create a new one. I'll give it a name, single. So this will be implemented for site two, site three, and site four. Okay. And for single gateway, I will create. Remember, so for each site, we will have two uplinks. So I need to create a two. Okay, this is for one link. We give the internet for the link one and the so for the device, as you, we only have one device for this one, and the interface type. We, we support uh, over 10 type of the interface type. You can see GE, FE, 10GE, LT, DSL, E1. Okay, CRA is a trunk look back. So it depends on what type of the uplinks provided by service provider, you can select, okay. So we are connecting using the GE port. So the port number is port number eight. So you need to make sure this is the correct port number that is connected to the, the uplinks, okay? And for the internet, I will sl select the internet transport network. Remember that by default, the platform already create for transport network, okay, for TN. So I will use the default one. And so the, the show, you can choose either active or standby. So from one perspective, I will choose active and active. And the next one, one link will be the MPS. MPS, we are using another device, uh, the same device, sorry. So we have single gateway, so same device have two uplinks. And the second port for MPS, make sure it is correct. So it's for my environment, it is port number eight, top port number nine, okay. And for transport network, you need to select the MPS, okay. So you see the topology is automatically generated. Then it is, it is done. So we click OK. Okay. The new template is created. And then we need to create another template for dual gateway. Okay, for side one. So this will give the name dual. So we need to switch to dual gateway. Okay. And you can also enable the multi-sub interface if you if you need it. Okay. For my for this demo, so I'm not, I don't need a uh, sub interface. Okay. So I also need to create two one link okay, for each devices. Same name, internet for device one. Okay, for device one, so I connect the port number eight. Internet, active, active. For MPS, I will select the second device, device two. For device two, I also use port number eight to connect the MPS link. Okay. So now you see the 
the uh, the party is showing here and another thing we need to uh, set up for the interlink between the two gateway okay this is used for the uh, intelligent traffic steering okay move on to the bottom part we have the interlink so if you want to connect it via layer 2 link so you can enable here and I have already connected via layer 3 link so I don't need to enable so you can set up any VLAN range okay so any VLAN range set up here because we will use sub interface to configure the inter CP link okay so you have to set up the VLAN ID and uh, I use port number five to connect both both devices. Okay, click OK. So the dual template has been created. So we will implement the two template in next stage, ZTP. Okay, now we're going to create ZTP. Okay, configuration. So we need to create the four size ZTP configurations one by one. For so for size one. It is the dual gateway. So just click to deploy and select. You can see from the top part, we have uh, several options for zero touch provision. So the DTP mode will be, <coughs> you can select URL, USB disk, or DHCP option. Okay, so we support three type of the options for zero touch provisioning. So we will use the URL for test purpose. Okay, so if you want to uh, enable the sub interface, no issue. Okay. So we will select the template that we just create for deal template for deal gateway. Okay. Uh, after you select that, you will you should be able to see the device AR1-2, AR1-1. Okay, I just want to switch to starting from AR1-1 and, and then AR1-2. Then you need to you can see the template information that we just created. So for AR1-1, we use port number eight. For AR1-2, we also use port number eight. Okay, for different for different uplinks, internet and MPS. So both gateway are active, active from one perspective. Let me first configure the AR1-1. So click here to set up the, the public IP address, mask, and the gateway provided by the service provider. Okay. So see these information is already being filled okay by default and the interface you need to select the interface so the interface is already there from the template point number eight just click ok let's see it okay okay and then we need to configure the ip address so if it's a, a static uh, public ip address so you need to type here if it's a if it's a dynamic ip address such as the DSL link or LTE, you need to select DHCP, okay? Because we create a template uh, not for DSL and LTE, so you cannot uh, select this DHCP. So I will use the public, I will simulate the public IP address for AR1-1 is 10.1.35.250, okay? Subnet will be 24 and the gateway will be 35.254. Okay. And the last part, you need to set up the bandwidth for both uplink and downlink. So this is this is a real bandwidth provided by the service provider. Okay. So assume that we we are using we will use 10 megabits per second for both uplink and downlink. Okay. Then click OK. So it's done. So we need to also configure the MPS link the same. Okay. So you can see this is AR1-2 for MPS. Uh, select the port number 8, click OK. And the different IP address is provided by MPS uh, service provider. It will be 10.1.36.250. So we use 36.250. And previous, uh, for internet, we use 35.250. Okay. Same subnet and the gateway. 36.254. Same bandwidth for uplink and downlink. Okay, it's configured. After finish the configuration, we, we just click OK. Okay, you see you can see the inter CP link has already been implemented here. No need to configure. Click OK. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, it's done. So once you finish the Zeta provisioning configuration, the cycle will become green. Okay, so <clears throat> so it will also show the the rest of three sides for unconfigured. So let's do the same for the rest side. Side two is a single template. For a single template, you can see there is only one device. For the device which has the two uplinks. IP address 10.1.37 this time. 2.5.4. Then this okay. for MPS ten down one down thirty eight. Make sure it is different from previous IP address. Okay. We have done for site two, <coughs> for site three, we do the same, <coughs> same as site two. This time will be 10.1.39.250, 24, 10.1.39.254. We set up all the uplinks as 10, up, uplinks and downlinks as 10 megabits per second. The last site. For site 4, Number 42.250 and 42.254 for gateway. 10 megabits. Okay, so we completed the four size for zero touch provisioning. Uh, actually, all the configuration is pre configured from the controller, from the Amazon NC compass. So as of now, the configuration is not provisioned into the device. So make sure that all the devices should be reset to factory. And also we, we need to connect all devices to the correct port. Okay. So this is the basic connectivity from device perspective. From controller side, we configure all the pre-configurations. So now what I need to do, as I mentioned that we have three options. We can send email, to the receiver, to the local engineer, okay? And we can also uh, choose the DHCP. So we already choose the URL. So we can also download the URL. So what is the URL uh, included? The configuration, the basic configurations has been included to the URL. So let me download the URL and show you what will be inside. So we will move all the side to the bottom and click OK. An Excel sheet will be downloaded to the local drive. Okay, so let me expand this one. You can see for site one we have the AR1-1. So totally we have four sites and five devices. So each devices have an URL. Okay, so this is a actual URL. So this URL will be sent to the local engineer. Okay, and we can also send this URL to the email. So once the local engineer received this URL, he, what he need to do just connect his laptop to the 
router management port and click just by one click this URL and the configuration will be provisioned to the router automatically. After that, router will automatically register our NC campus okay, to the internet or MPS link. Okay. So uh, finally the our NC campus will push provision or configurations from controller to router. Okay. So this is the whole theory for their touch provision and deployment. So what is configuration inside? As you can see here, this IP address is router management IP address. Okay. So you can, once you click this, this link, you should be able to open a web browser okay, provided by router. And then this IP address is our MSNZ campus southbound IP address. So the network device will register to the southbound IP address. So you can see this southbound IP address has the same IP subnet with our live environment, MSNC campus. But the, uh, the only difference will be the GUI, GUI page will be the northbound IP address. For the registration will be the southbound IP address. Okay, so this is 36.10 and the URL, the northbound, uh, southbound IP address will be 36.7. 36 okay, so this is the port number and the Remember that we configure 10.1.36.25 there for AR1-2, okay, inside one. And we configure the gateway, okay, for AR1-2. This is a subnet. So there are just a few configurations. This is the basic configurations provided by service provider, okay. So once the configuration is provisioned to router, router should be able to access internet or MPS, and then we automatically register to the controller southbound IP address. That's the whole scenario for zero touch provisioning. So what we can do, uh, because we don't have the email uh, server, so I will first download all the site uh, URL link and copy paste it to my remote PC. So we can we come back to the diagram. As you can see, we have the ZTP, we have DTP AR1-1, DTP AR1-2. For each router, we have the DTP PC. So the DTP PC has already connected to the router management port. Okay, so what I need to do is just RDP to the DTP PC and copy paste the link to the PC browser and then the, the configuration will automatically provision to the router. Okay, so let's now open the remote PC. So I have already opened the five remote PC, and which is the AR1-1, AR1-2, AR2, AR3, and, and AR4. Okay. So for we start from AR1-1. What I need to do, so first I need, I need to check the reachability between the ZTP PC and the router. So the router's default management IP will be the 192.168.1.1. Okay, so it's, it's pinnable. So the, the, by default, the router will be working at the DCP to assign IP to our DTP PC. Okay, so you can see I have two network interface cards. So this network interface card will obtain IP address from the router management port. You can see they have the same IP subnet. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to open the browser and copy paste the URL. Okay. For AR1-2, we will copy paste this URL, copy paste to the remote PC. So in the meantime, we'll do the same for the AR1-2. AR2 Okay, let's first finish AR AR3. Okay, you can see once you uh, 
copy paste the link once you click the link from the uh, browser so you should, be to, you should be able to see the welcome page so you can check the parameter first so the parameter will contain the uh, msdnc campus northbound ip address the port, port number and uh, what is physical port that you connect to the uplink and uh, you will you will use this public IP address subnet and the gateway for this router. Okay, so you only need to click confirm deployment. Okay, this one we need to refresh. Sometimes it is unable to open because we have two network interface card. Okay, okay, so let's do uh, the rest branch site for AR. ER3. Okay, we need to make sure, make sure we are able to pin the gateway. Okay. Let me try again. Because I need to remote access to the PC, and sometimes so for the PC, there are two default gateways. So sometimes it's going to another gateway. Looks like this is a wrong URL. Let me open again. Okay, probably I copied to the wrong URL. Starting, make sure starting from the HTTPS 192.168. Okay, and the last one for, for the site for. Size three, we confirm confirm deployment by right two. Okay, let's make sure because I have a very small screen and I need to see the link for site two, okay, for AR2. Copy to this part. Okay, normally it will uh, take several minutes to deploy the zero touch provisioning. So in the meantime, I will pause the video. And okay, let's come back to the zero touch, zero touch provisioning. So so far, you can see we have successfully pushed the configurations from the ZTP PC to the router. Okay, so it it gives you the welcome page. So we come back to the controller. Now you can see all the access router has been online. So you see the AR1-1, 1-2, AR2, 3, 4 are normal status. Okay. For each site, we have already finished the zero touch provisioning for router only. Okay. So you can, uh, you can see the LAN devices still are unregistered status. Site 1, site 2, site 3, and site 4. Okay. So move on to the next stage of one underlay. So after uh, after you you have completed the ZTP, so you will see all the cycle becomes green color. So we we'll move move on to the next stage for one underlay. So what one underlay used for? So this interface will automatically generate it. So we what we need to do only set up the one route. So we have already configured the routers, IP address, subnet, and the uh, gateway, but we need to set up the the routes for for the LAN devices behind the router. Okay, <clears throat> so we can uh, start from the side one, one route. We click here to add route routing protocol. We have three type of the routing protocol available in Amazon and Z campus: OSPF, PGP, and the static. Okay, we we choose the static. For the simple demo. Okay, when I create, you can see the, the all the routing information is here. So what we need to do just set up a destination address. So we set up the default gateway. Okay, let's say then the gateway will be the 35.254 okay, provided by a service provider. And there are two uplinks for the side one. So we need to set up another link. 
So remember that another another link is connected to the AR one two. So you need to select the correct uh, devices. Okay. So AR one two is connected to the MPS link. So you will also use the default route. So the gateway will be 36.254. Okay. So it is done for site one. So we will do the same for the rest of the site. One route. Create a static route. First internet link. For, for set two, there's only one router. So we so there's no options, okay? But we need to select the correct uplinks for MPS. 38.254 The next side, side 3 Static root Internet 39.254 MPS 40.254 the last site <coughs> for one dot two five four for MPS for two dot two five four. Okay, after you finish the one root. You can see this cycle. This cycle becomes green color as well. Okay, so we have the one part left for the underlay network configuration. The last part will be the inter-site networking. So after we finish this part, the BTP EV pin tunnel will be established automatically. Okay, so we pr we initiate one row called routing reflector. Okay. Uh, also known as R. So this is a similar theory at BGP. So we use the routing reflector R as a control plane row to establish the BGP EV pin tunnel with each site. So we already assigned the uh, routing reflector row combined with the site one. Okay, so where did where did we assign this row to combined with site one? So let me open the previous template remember this template we upload we import in batch okay so we can set up the row for each devices for ar1-1 and ar1-2 so there is a drop down menu here you can set up the different row okay so you can see i set up the both gateway and routing reflector okay and for the for the rest for the rest site ar ar2 ar3 ar4 only assign the gateway of course, you can also assign the gateway plus routing reflector for AR2. Uh, it, it is depends on your requirement. Okay, you can, which means you can assign R to multiple sites. Okay, so the rest of site R routing uh, router is only gateway. We come back to the controller. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to connect the site two, site two, site three, site four to the routing reflector. Otherwise, the BGP EV pin cannot be established uh, automatically. Okay, So we will check these three, okay? and connect, click connect, and then check side one, because side one is the R. Detect, okay? then click OK. So after finish this step, you will see the three side one will appear here, So which means Site two, site three, site four have have been uh, associated with R site. Okay, R is site one site. So move on to the bottom part. You can see the R statistics. Okay, so there are three R, which means there are uh, three BTP connections have been created between R and the sites. Okay, so we finished this session for one underlay. Uh, 